great to be here in Black Sheep Boxing in Austin. It's yeah. Jeffy Meadows. And how's it going? It, it's good, man. It's good. It's uh, it's nice to have you back in Austin. Uh, it, it's it's an absolute pleasure to, you know, have you come by the facility. Um, I know you got the your uh, Box and Burn Academy course out at Onnit yeah. Gym for the next two days. Um, so carving out some time to come out here, man. And you know, we get to share a small piece of my story and how we met, and um, you know, the amazing benefits that that I've reaped through the years of uh. Yeah, you know, going through your course. So on our course, we teach people how to teach boxing, but it's a lot more than that for a lot of people. For Correct. some people, it is, yeah, I'll then hold the mitts and that's it. But for other people, they get a lot more out of it, which I know you've done as well. Correct. And uh, not just the boxing side, but some motivation side, some mm -hmm. business side, and you know, giving you the confidence to to be able to to move forward with yeah. a career. I think that that was the big part was the confidence uh, in the early stages. Uh, so make a long story real short, you know, I was I was about five, six months sober at the time. Uh, I'm working in a sober living house uh, with my buddy Charles and I, I'm training these individuals that struggle with mental health uh, in a garage and in a field um, five, five to seven days a week. Um, you know, I, I'm working with these these men and women that struggle with substance abuse and mental health. and. Uh, and so my buddy Charles approached me and goes, hey, Jeff, I saw this ad for this Box and Burn Academy, you know. And uh, so anyway, so I looked it up. I had about I had about $700 in the bank at the time, driving 99 Honda, you know, just really rebuild my life. And I've spent mo about most of my life in the penitentiary um, from uh, drinking and driving and, you know, just uh, making really bad decisions. Uh, so anyway, so... Um, Within fucking five, 10 minutes, I read the course. It said I could split up my payments. Um, I made my first payment immediately. I had no idea how I was gonna get to Florida. Um, I know I didn't have money for a plane ticket, um, but I knew it was like, this is something that I wanted and I knew I was gonna figure it out. You know, so, um, so, you know, so Charles, after making that payment, I got to talk to Charles a little bit. And uh, I think I was like four weeks out and uh, I just started grinding, you know, started working my, my butt off, you know, saving money where I could. And what we did is I ended up spending 25 hours in the car. Me and my buddy drove to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I took the 18 hour course and I immediately drove back. Right. It was miserable, <laughs> absolutely miserable. But I think the, the biggest thing that, that I got out of it was that confidence part. Um, because whenever I've been incarcerated, uh, you know, I, util I utilize the fundamentals of combat sports to help inmates um, lose weight. I'd write diet plans for them based off the money that they have coming in on their commissary. So I'd help them lose weight leading up to their discharge date. Right. So I, I had all this knowledge, but it, it didn't it wasn't like the nail in the coffin. I always thought I might be doing it right, you know, um, but after I took your course, understanding the fitness side of things, um, it, it was that nail in the coffin for me. So whenever I got back home, I felt like I can do this. Like, right. like I, I can be a coach. I am breaking down these techniques the right way, you know, so it gave me that confidence to really market myself. Um, and then over time, yeah. Let me ask this, why do you feel like you didn't have the confidence? Why do you feel like you couldn't go out there and do this? Why did you need, or not need, why, why did we motivate you into giving you that confidence? Uh, well, my whole life has been unorthodox. You know, uh, I've repeated seventh grade twice, I dropped out in ninth grade. Um, I've spent about nine years, a little nine and a half years in institutions, um, starting at the age 11. So I always had these confident issues growing up. You know, and the only things I was really good at growing up was chess and, uh, and fighting, you know. And then whenever I, I got sober and I turned over a new leaf, um, I fell in love with working with men and women that struggle with mental health. Because when I put the gloves on and I actually train, I don't think about, I don't think about drug use. I don't think about the financial insecurities. I don't think about the past. I don't think about the future. I, it's one of the most natural grounding techniques that I've ever experienced. I'm just worried about not getting hit. I'm worried about where my feet are going. And I wanted other people that struggle with mental health to have those experiences that I have because it played such a big part in my early stages of my recovery. Um, and so whenever, you know, a lot of people, when I first came into this industry, Tony, a lot of people said he can't be a coach. He's not a pro fighter. He hasn't had an amateur career. And that, and I got a lot, a lot of hate for that. Like a lot, especially through social media, through Facebook. They're like, well, he's never been an active amateur professional fighter, so what is he doing teaching? Yeah. And uh, and so that, that just that little bit of confidence that I got from y'all's program about four years ago, um, it helped set in, in the, 
help set the wheel in motion for me to truly start investing, not just in my career, but in other individuals. It did give me the confidence to market um, because after I talked to you and Glenn, I knew like, okay, I am wrapping hands right. Just all the, the fundamentals, man. You get right. on YouTube, everybody has something to say. Yeah. You know, everybody's uh, got, well, you're not doing it right, or I need to correct you. And so coming from, you know, a retired professional boxer um, with your background, I could kind of tone them out. I could block them out, yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm like, well, I already got, you know, the, the, right, uh, um, the right direction. So, you know. And one thing that I always start the courses with is you don't have to have been a boxer to teach boxing. You don't have to have had a pro career to teach boxing. You've, yes, you've got to understand it, right. and that's what we do with the course, give you the understanding of it. Obviously, you already had the understanding, and then uh, when you, we just made you think, oh yeah, well, I, I really do know this, these, these guys have shown us, and then giving you the confidence to, to go ahead and then, and then try and teach it. And, and that's the thing about people online. If we ever get any criticism for our course, it's like, how can you teach someone who's never fought before how to teach boxing? Yeah. Well, for one, we teach boxing for fitness, which is different uh, teaching someone in the ring how to have a fight. Correct. Uh, and when you're teaching someone for fitness, obviously it's, it's completely different to that. So if we get any criticism, that's what it is. Uh, but if I listen to the critics, if you listen to the critics, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing now, yeah. which is changing so many people's lives in this community and really bringing this community together. Uh, so yeah, we can never listen to them critics. Yeah, and, and, and it's hard, you know, because a, a lot of these these decisions that, that we make um, on this journey of life are driven by fear. You right. know, fear of insecurities, fear of not being good enough, fear of failure, um, because what the outside population, all these two cents that everybody's, you know, putting into your yeah. life, it, 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 it tears us down subconsciously, you know. And for me, I truly believe it's a practice to be able to drown out the noise, yeah. you know, and, and truly focus on yourself and just continue to do what, what you love to do. Right. Um, and, and that's, I, I can't stress it enough. You know, I tell everybody that, that especially getting into this industry, um, Austin, Texas is absolutely, it's huge for this fitness style of pad work and boxing. And a lot of times that's where these journeys start. These journeys start um, with the simplicity of understanding how to hold pads, how to wrap hands. And then if you're truly passionate about it, you, you could get into the competitive side. Yeah. You know, it takes a lot yeah. of hard work. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of hours, you know, and it takes a great community, but it's all got to start somewhere. Yeah, definitely, 100%. And so you left the course in Florida, you had that massive drive back home, and then what happened? Man, right when I got back, back um, for about two and a half years, um, I was training people in two different parks at a rec center. I went to a garage in Georgetown, then I moved to a garage in Flukerville. Then I signed a year contract with Big Tech's gym next door. I bought this boxing ring. And then about six months from there, I saved up enough money over about two and a half, three years. Um, then I partnered up with my best friend, Sky, and we opened up this place. Right. So, Amazing. and it just set that wheel in motion. I mean, right when I got back, it was, it was like clockwork. So you took a massive risk in putting all your mm. life savings into a building, and then you've got people seeing in the background that you're drowning out. Yeah. This is stupid. What, mate, yeah. you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna you're gonna uh, waste your money. You're not gonna do this. You're not a boxer, and you just like, let, let's see. Yeah, and and a lot of those individuals that that you know didn't have anything positive to say to me. Um, now some of them train here. Yeah, some of them. You know, and, and some of them uh, I've been able to. They've made amends, and I actually have these really healthy and amazing relationships with some of these individuals that uh, that didn't believe in what I was doing simply because I did not have an amateur professional career right. and I don't have to explain to anybody like I didn't have the opportunity to go have a boxing career um, the universe had different plans for me and where I grew up and all my opportunities were unfortunately they were behind uh, penitentiary doors right you know and uh, so it, it, it's I don't know what my life would have looked like if uh, my childhood looked different but at the end of the day like I never would have found the Box and Burn Academy if I wasn't a recovering alcoholic. Yeah. Because I never would have been working at a sober home. Right. You know, if I never was a recovering alcoholic and got sober, I never would have started working with people that struggle with mental health and substance yeah. abuse. Yeah. So if I look at the timeline of everything, 
I mean, it, it's just, it's, it, it's ungodly. Like, it, it's just so perfect how everything worked out to lead me up to here, sitting with you that led me into the Box and Burn Academy when I got out. And now we own um, one of the top um, combat sport facilities in, in, in Texas. Yeah. Um, we've been open, this facility has been open 13 months. We have an absolutely amazing um, professional and amateur boxing, Muay Thai, and mixed martial arts team. Uh, we own our fight promotions. Um, still, I own and uh, run two boxing programs at two local treatment facilities here uh, in uh, Liberty Hill in, in Austin, Texas yeah. still. Um, we have, we're open 24 hours for people that struggle with mental health and substance mm -hmm. abuse. Um, so if they, you know, want to shoot dope or, you know, get drunk or whatever that is, they get in a fight with the spouse or just have a hard day they have the uh, option to come in here whether it's 2 a.m. they can come in here they can work out on a heavy bag um, so technically I own all my success to struggling with substance abuse now yeah so. yeah and you, you know you've you've created your a great journey and you've created your own look and you've took the leap you started with that $700 mm -hmm. and you know you took that big drive come back and worked your ass off to be in this position right now and it's very very inspirational you know we've we've taught thousands of people uh in our in our in our courses and uh, for me this is the, the what, probably one of the most if not the most inspirational story out there what you've done you've really turned your life around and you know through through boxing through martial arts yeah. through, through through this gym and it's amazing and you know i bet you never thought back then see yeah. five years ago that you've just said what the words you've just mm -hmm. said is you got one of the best martial arts gyms in Texas. And I gotta say the reason why we have one of the best gyms in Texas is because of our coaches. It's because of this guy behind me, Joshua Scales, it's from RJ. Like I I really stopped doing um, a lot when it comes to coaching and training. Right. Um, the, the coaches that we have at this facility is the reason why we are so successful. Yeah, yeah. I, I had this vision, of course, you know, like uh, we, pump the finances into it I had this vision of coaches as well I actually told uh, my buddy Josh that's training over there right now I told him before I opened up I said I'm gonna open up a facility and I'm gonna want you know you you and you uh, talking about some other individuals to come and run these programs because of how talented they are you know and not just with coaching just as, as human beings our coaches uh, it goes so much further than them being able to coach um, the fundamentals or the advanced techniques of Muay Thai boxing oh, yeah. or mixed martial arts. They're personable, they know how to build rapport, and they actually care. They care about their clients, they care about the community. Um, a lot of these gyms you come in and like, it's almost where you got the boxing community is beefing with the, you know, the MMA community, and here it's like our MMA guys take the boxing classes, our boxing uh, guys take the Muay Thai classes, yeah. and, and everybody um, just works together. Yeah. And uh, I, I can't stress that enough. It's like a lot of people are like, man, Jeff, you're doing absolutely amazing, and it's like, that's a great knob, but the reality of it is our coaches. Yeah. They're the ones doing the footwork these days. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I play a, a smaller role than what I used to, because before it was all me. Yeah, yeah. You know, now it's just making sure that our coaches are taken care of, making sure that we're investing in our community, in the facility, and most of our staff. Yeah, and that, that, that's a great point there, you know. Your coaches, the team, the team around you is the ones you know, that's greeting people when they come in yes. to, the, to, to the gym. Um, and you're making a change. I know your coach, you see your coaches, but you are, and your coaches are making a change on the community of, of Austin. And you just never know who, who comes in, like you said, this gym's open at 2 a.m. if someone wants it. Correct. And that could be the turning point from someone who wanted to go and take drugs. and then Or go overdoses and dies. Overdoses and dies, or mm -hmm. kill some fucker who might, might get drunk, drink yeah. and drive and, and knock someone over. So I think what you guys are doing here is amazing and changing lives, like, I don't think you understand the impact that you're probably having on, on so many people's lives, which is, which is unbelievable. And uh, I think this is going to, the success of this gym will, will continue and just keep growing and growing because you're doing it for the right reasons. You're, you're, I like to think so. You're, you're not doing yeah. it to, to get rich. Although, uh, well, it's, a, nice. it's funny you say that. You know, it's like I'm a human being. You know what I mean? I, I've struggled in sobriety. Uh, I, I've struggled really hard this past year. It's been, it's been a really tough year just because uh, you get blindsided with the finances. You get blindsided with the success. You get blindsided with maybe the, some nice materialistic stuff that you could finally afford, you know, and it's, it's, 
the biggest part is the coaches, the, which are all good friends of mine, my business partners, we all hold each other accountable. Yeah. Um, we are a purpose-driven gym, and the minute ego starts coming to surface or we start chasing the finances, like we, I've got my coaches, I've got business partners, we all communicate with each other and to make sure that everybody stays humble. Yeah. You know, and because we're human beings, it, it's it's inevitable for our ego to get the best of us. It's inevitable for us to become financially driven, you know, because money does make things easier. Yeah. But it, it could also be the reason why you get in a wreck. Yeah. And money, it does make things easier. It helps you be able to help more people as well. Uh, and I think that the purpose of this gym and what you're doing, I think it's just going to continue to rise. And, you know, I'm very proud to be a friend of yours and uh you know, and we're very proud that you've done our course, even mm -hmm. though I believe in deep inside that if you didn't do the course, I think you would have found this anyway. I think you would have found the, the confidence anyway, and you would have been killing it and, and doing yeah. what you would do anyway. Uh, we'll never know. We, we never know, <laughs> but I, I, I believe you would have, because you're a hard worker, yeah. you've, got a, you've got a big heart, and you, and you mean well. Well, I appreciate it, and, and if I gotta say anybody about that's thinking about taking this course, uh, at the end of the day, it, it's what you make it. You know, if you want to take this Box and Burn Academy course, and if you want to leave and say it wasn't worth it, then it won't be worth it. But right. if you take this course, and if you leave, and if you utilize what these, uh, what Glenn and Tony are, are have been broken down to you, you could truly use it to set yourself up for long-term success. It's really what you make it. Yeah. Um, and I recommend everybody to take the course. Um, even myself, like it, it's just, we would love to have a course here one day. Yeah, you know, we will. my buddies over at Hill Street Boxing in Southampton, Tom and Avery, they've, you know, when y'all did the course out there, it's just every, nobody's had anything negative to say, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, I've heard just so many amazing stories that come out of um, taking that course, you know, and it, it, it kick starts a lot of journeys. Well, again, talking about the purpose, we're not doing it for the money, we're doing yeah. it like you're seeing with you here, we're doing it to help people and, and you know, People can't afford it. We uh, we let them off, and it's we we want people to benefit from it, and want them people to go and then help more people. That's what we're passionate about. Yeah. So yeah, I appreciate it, mate. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you.